Correct nozzle height and bed leveling are the two most important factors in 3D printing. If you don't get these right, it spells the difference between this and this. So you might be wondering why I haven't talked about this idea on this channel before. Well, that's because seemingly every different 3D printer on the market does this differently and talking about how it works on my Art Mini would have only helped you so much. But step forward today and I have a couple more printers at my command. So in this video, I'll show you seven different ways you can set your nozzle height and bed level on seven different machines. Let's get into it. Ah yes, hello and welcome back to another 3D Printing 101 here on Maker's Muse. So why is nozzle height and bed level so important for your 3D printing success? Well, basically your first layer is the most important layer of the entire 3D print. And if your nozzle height is too far away from the bed, it's obviously not going to stick. And similarly, if it's too close, you'll get filament grinding, the machine won't be able to extrude properly, and you'll get other kinds of failures. So getting that nozzle height correct is of critical importance. General practice is to set the nozzle height slightly below your layer height. So for example, if you're printing at 200 micron, you might want to try to set your nozzle height at 150 micron away from the bed. But really, you can just pretty much guess using a business card or other thin piece of card, or even a piece of paper folded over itself a few times. As long as you get a distance that's not too far and not too close, you're going to be okay. Similarly, bed level is equally as important. Although your nozzle height may be correct in one area, if your bed is not level, the other side of the bed may be completely wrong. So different manufacturers tackle this problem in different ways. And we're gonna go through the most simplest to the most complicated in this guide. And far at the simplest end is the Fabricator Mini. This is the smallest 3D printer that I use. It's also the cheapest, and it has the most simplest method for setting your nozzle height. There is a tiny screw which you can change to offset the homing distance for the Z axis. It's as simple as that. It's a bit of a trial and error approach, but it's certainly economical. So by adjusting the screw, you can adjust where the machine senses the Z home position at zero. And then by doing so, you can set a good nozzle height. But how do you level the bed in the Fabricator Mini? Well, you don't. Basically, this machine has no way to level the bed apart from some hacky methods of putting bits of paper underneath various screws in the bed assembly. But the thing is, this machine is so small that you don't really need to level a bed because at its size, you're unlikely to have a bed that's out of level. Now, there has been some complaints in the market of people getting fabricated minis where the beds have been bowed, and this is a problem. You can't really solve this without getting a new bed. But in my case, this machine has never needed to have any bed adjustments other than the nozzle height, and once that's set, it's pretty much good to go. So let's move on to the Up Mini. Ah yes, yeah. so this is the Up Mini from Tier Time. This is the first 3D printer I ever got and I still use it all the time. It's a fantastic little machine for a really good price. And the way you do the nozzle height is actually completely different to most other printers on the market. It is a software driven nozzle height method. So you go into the software and essentially raise the bed up by a certain amount, entering specific amounts into the console. And then once you're happy, you click set nozzle height. The machine will remember what you have set, even if you unplug it and take it to a different computer. And then that is your new nozzle height. So the good thing about this is you can really precisely fine tune it by entering those precise numbers. But what about bed leveling? Well, this is where the Up Mini's price point kind of means you lose a few features. There is no way of manually leveling the bed on the Up Mini. It's actually done through software, through software compensation. So you do this by going through the software's bed leveling routine and you choose one of nine points and adjust it to suit using a small spacer card. And in doing this, the software will know to automatically adjust that first layer to suit, but you must print with a raft. That's the only gotcha with this method. If you try to print raftless, you can't use the software bed leveling method. You need to have some way of manually leveling the bed. Now, you can get the Up Mini's bed and tweak it to be level using some kind of barbaric methods, but ultimately, again, similarly to the Fabricator Mini, most of these Up Mini machines have a bed so small that bed leveling isn't really much of a concern. So let's move on to something a little bit bigger. So this is the Cocoon Create, which is a rebrand of the Wanhao Duplicator i3 version 2. So you notice on the bed there are four points. Each of these points have a spring-loaded wing nut, which you can tighten 
or loosen to change the height of the bed. So to level your bed, it's actually quite a manual affair. You need to home your device and set everything to zero and tighten these screws down quite a bit to make sure there's no collisions. And then basically turn the stepper motors off and move it around on the bed to work out where those optimal heights are. And you do this by setting a piece of card, like a spacer card, business cards work well, and then pretty much move it around point to point till you're happy with it. It's a very manual process, but it seems to work quite well. There's a few improvements you can do to the Wanhao i3, such as printing thumb screws instead of the wing nuts that it comes with to make it a little bit easier, but really it is quite a manual process, but it is a low cost machine, so you get what you pay for. Next we have guided bed leveling. So similar to the Wanhao i3, the Craftbot Plus has spring-loaded screws which you adjust and tighten to change the bed level and the nozzle height. However, differently to the Wanhao i3, this is a guided process using a built-in bed level and nozzle height routine. So it basically steps you through each step of the way, moving the head around each time to the exact points that you want to adjust. And this really does help because the Craftbot Plus, like a couple of other printers, has only three points of adjustment rather than four on the Wanhao i3. So this can be quite daunting and confusing to adjust because you're adjusting a bed with four directions with only three points. So machines like the Up Plus 2 or the MakerBot 2X use this kind of system. So having a guided bed level system built into the machine really helps you to dial it in. If it's your first time, take it slow, triple check it and make sure it's right, do a small print and if you're happy, continue on to your larger prints. All right, now we're really moving up the food chain. So this is the Up Box, which has automatic bed level and nozzle height calibration. So what does that mean? Well, basically when you set your nozzle height on the Up Box, there is a touch plate at the back of the bed. So as the bed will slowly raise up, it will touch that touch plate onto the nozzle and it will work out quite accurately where the nozzle height is. Now you do need to be careful of some things like dags of plastic on the end of the nozzle, which may harden and incorrectly set that nozzle height. So I do still recommend using a manual adjustment to just really check, but in terms of usability, automatic adjustment is awesome. In terms of bed level, the up box actually has two options. You can level it, like I said, on the Craftbot Plus using multiple points underneath the bed, or you can use the software offsets, which actually it will do automatically using a little touch probe that drops down with a servo and touches on various points onto the bed. It'll then take these offset values and work out where the bed is and then so when it lays down that first layer it'll be exactly right no matter how unlevel the bed may be. Dialing in a bed that large manually can be really tricky especially with only three adjustment points so I am quite glad that the machine includes this but you'd expect it at the price point the Upbox is at. Next in this lineup we have the CEL Robox which is one of the smartest 3D printers I've ever worked with. So in terms of automatic calibration, it does it all. It has automatic nozzle height and automatic bed level, and it does this before every print, which is a good way to make the printer kind of foolproof in something like a classroom environment, something that I do quite respect. In terms of how it does it, the actual entire nozzle assembly tilts backwards as it presses into the bed, and by doing so, it actually breaks contact with the top rail, which is a conductive sensor, essentially, so the whole head is a switch and it moves around point by point to work out where the bed is. And then it will use its automatic offsets and calibration to then adjust the first layer to suit. So in terms of manual adjustment, there pretty much is none in the Robox. It does all of it by itself. You can work out some fine tuning like the level of the Z axis, but in terms of working out the nozzle height, it does it all pretty much by itself, which is cool. And finally, we have the Cubicon Single. Now, I don't have a Cubicon Single here to show you because unfortunately, I only have ever had a loaner unit. But in terms of automatic calibration, the Cubicon Single has the best method I have ever seen. It has a motorized platform that will mechanically level itself. So a lot of these machines will use software to software level, and it's not ideal because the plate is still not completely flat. Whereas the Cubicon, has mechanical leveling, which is really, really cool. And you'd expect so for a machine that costs four and a half thousand Australian dollars. So I hope I've shown you in this video there's many different ways you can set your nozzle height and level your bed. But the most critical thing is that you do it no matter what method you use, because a nozzle height that is incorrect will lead to failed prints. There's no doubt about it. So whether it's adjusting a tiny screw, like in the case of the Fabricator Mini, 
or having an entire bed that mechanically levels itself in the case of the Cubicon, as long as you get that level correct, you're going to get great prints off your machine no matter what price point you choose. So thank you very much guys for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you want to see future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse, please don't forget to subscribe. It really does help me a lot. I also have a Patreon where you can join up to get additional perks. It's by no means mandatory, but if you want to check it out, you can click there. And I'll see you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.